I, I want to start here with this idea of why there are so many churches, uh, just so many denominations uh, that, uh, that we count as the black church. Uh, I always think of it as this kind of wonderful point of diversity in our community, um, but I'm not sure everybody understands why that diversity exists and where it comes from. So um, I will start with you, Pastor Rudolph. Uh, tell us, uh, as someone who's leading an AME church, uh, what that's all about. So I think that our diversity is for sure our strength. Um, the Black church is not just a monolithic church. It is a very diverse church. And we are able to represent different theological perspectives. And I think that's a beautiful thing because it gives people many options. I think we share something in common and that is that we are here to meet the spiritual and social and educational needs of our people. Um, and that can include a myriad of things. And so we thank God for the diversity of the Black church. The AME church is unique in that while many churches were born out of theological and spiritual differences, the AME church was founded out of social protest. Mm. And so when we look at our founding bishop, who was Bishop Richard Allen, he was born a slave in the year 1760. And at the young age of 20, he purchased his freedom for $2,000, which was a tremendous amount of money back in the 18th century. And so we thank God for his foresight. Um, he was attracted to the Methodist teachings because at the time they were very liberal in their thinking. Uh, they preached an anti-slavery message and they preached a very liberating gospel. And so as a uh, slave, he was of course attracted to that. Mm. After he purchased his freedom, he then went on to become a traveling preacher himself. And he preached in places like Maryland and Delaware. He made his way to Philadelphia where he uh, became the 5 a.m. morning worship preacher at the St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church. And it was during that time that he began to attract many new worshipers of African descent. And unfortunately, the white Methodists at the time were not prepared to handle that. And so in an effort to maintain control, what they did was they relegated the Blacks to worshiping in the balcony and the back of the church. This, of course, was unsettling for Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, who were leaders at the time. Uh, Absalom Jones was actually pulled from his knees while praying uh, one morning. And that sort of galvanized the Black worshipers along with Richard Allen, and they led what is arguably the first act of organized civil disobedience on the part of free Africans mm. in the United States when they walked out of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church and started their own church. Uh, they were already operating as the Free African Society, which was a mutual aid society, which was designed to empower Black people, free Black people who were attempting to, um, to make their way at that time. And so that went on to become the AME Church uh, many years later in 1816 when we were officially established. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Henderson, uh, th again, this diversity comes mm -hmm. from our history. It, right. it, it's born out of, um, I think, necessity in, mm -hmm. in many instances. Um, but it is driven by uh, the discrimination and the, and the segregation that we face. Uh, talk about uh, the development of these different denominations within the church over time. Uh, first, let me applaud my colleague uh, for her <laughs> accuracy uh, uh, in giving the historical uh, origins of um, as uh, one of my colleagues says, we may be in the same boat now, but we didn't come over here in the same boat. Uh, and so our beginnings are as diverse uh, as our denominational identity. Uh, diverse in the sense that we were taken from various parts of Northern, uh, Western, Northwestern, uh, and Central Africa uh, and brought over here. Uh, we have Baptists, Methodists, uh, Episcopalian, Lutherans, uh, Catholics, and so forth, because uh, in an effort to respond 
uh, progressively uh, and positively to the outrage of being enslaved, our people sought uh, refuge, uh, solace, and comfort uh, pretty much wherever they could find it. Uh, and so uh, some became Baptists, some became, uh, depending on where they were. Uh, a lot of people do not know, and yet several do know, that uh, uh, Black Baptists started out, uh, the, the uh, ancestors of Black Baptists are African Muslim mm -hmm. from Islam. And you can find the evidence of that in the churches and in the Black Baptist churches in South Carolina, uh, when you see the uh, Muslim imagery uh, carved in the pews, mm -hmm. uh, uh, buried in the walls, uh, and other artifacts of, of historical significance when you visit uh, what we now call the Gullah people mm -hmm. of South Carolina. Uh, and so depending on where our folks were, uh, how connected they were to the Underground Railroad or how disconnected they may have been, as Reverend Rudolph uh, uh, has said, uh, they connected to the cry and struggle for freedom and jumped on wherever they could, however they could. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result of that, we had uh, uh, Black people leaving uh, white churches because they either couldn't uh, be a part of the leadership and decision makers, or even if they had what were called good white folk, which means they didn't beat them as much. They didn't discriminate and, and slaughter them and kill them as much or as gruesomely as some of their neighbors did. Uh, uh, Black folk realized that they were, uh, 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 they were not born to be enslaved. They were not born to be chattel uh, property. They were not born to uh, be locked up and exploited uh, and devalued. And so they struggled uh, when it became um, unpopular and illegal for them to learn to read. And, and, and this is uh, something else I, 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 want, I, I want to uh, expose. Mm -hmm. uh, our people have not been historically ignorant and illiterate. That's right. When you bring persons who speak uh, 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 Igbo, mm -hmm. uh, French, Kiswahili, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, and a uh, uh, Akan, um, uh, and a whole host of other indigenous African languages together. Uh, and you take the mama and put her on one plantation, mm -hmm. you take the children, put them somewhere else, you either kill the father or farm him out to somewhere else. And you put them with folks that are not of the same tribe and mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. you make it impossible for them to 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 read, to communicate, yeah. to thrive. Yeah, and that's done intentionally. And that's and, exactly that's that yeah. was done intentionally in mm -hmm. an effort to destroy us. Where we find our strength is that in spite of all of the segregation, the discrimination, the dehumanization and mm -hmm. devaluing, mm -hmm. God enabled our people in a sort of self-teaching type way through divine revelation mm -hmm. to survive mm -hmm. and to thrive. Yeah, yes. and to create our own, our own spaces. Um, uh, so, so uh, Pastor Rudolph, talk about how that history casts forward into your church today. I mean, your church is different from uh, a Baptist church that's black or a, a Methodist church that uh, is black in the sense that your church was started as a way of giving African Americans a space to, to participate in, in religious belief and celebration. Uh, so how does that, that history of liberation and the push toward liberation sort of play out today in the AME church? So I think that we are all called to preach and to live out social justice. 
Mm -hmm. um, not just for Black people, but for all people. We want to see equity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And so as Oak Grove, we are committed to outreach. Um, I don't know that there's a sermon that I preach that doesn't have some element of social gospel mm -hmm. in it. Um, we need to be able to preach a liberating word that always pushes people to strive for more and to recognize that we need to be who God designed us to be, which means that we need to level the playing field, which means that we need to be on equal footing as everyone else. That's and so whether it's um, environmental justice that we're fighting for, whether we are fighting for better education or more opportunities or whatever it may be, uh, we always want to emphasize that we as a people are entitled to our rights. And so we want to push that always. And we want to be the church that preaches a liberating gospel, but the church who also lives that gospel. And so right. we believe in outreach. We believe in empowering our people. We believe in being where the people are and meeting the needs of the people. And that goes right back to our history as the AME Church, because we are founded to meet those needs, not just spiritual, but social, educational, environmental, all of those things. We're called to meet those needs, to speak to those needs, yes, but also to meet those needs. That's right. Uh, Dr. Henderson, talk about how uh, the things uh, that Pastor Rudolph is talking about are common across Black churches, whether they're AME or Baptist, I, I, I hear that same message, I feel like, uh, from pastors, no matter what the denomination is, when they are leading a Black church. Uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, uh, basically, we have two archetype uh, generalized categories of churches. Uh, one is uh, congregational, mm -hmm. therefore, con. con uh, that they, they abide by a covenant agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other one uh, is uh, Episcopal, mm -hmm. uh, which means they are governed by creeds, and we call those creedal churches. Mm -hmm. We have a new hybrid in uh, the 21st century uh, where some churches that are uh, uh, covenantal uh, are also creedal, Mm -hmm. in that they have no difference uh, uh, faith-wise in what the apostles' creeds and other creeds uh, lift up. They just lift them up in a, in a different, uh, in a way that is different from mm -hmm. those who are in covenant. Uh, your Baptist church doesn't have to have a bishop's approval, even though we now see this new phenomenon of Baptist bishops. Uh, 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 they, they all want the same thing. Decent, affordable housing, mm -hmm. clean water, mm -hmm. clean air, mm -hmm. safe environment. Uh, uh, they want good jobs, health insurance, <laughs> life insurance, vacation uh, benefit. They want fair politics where if I vote for you to be the mayor, Stephen, I don't need uh, a bunch of folks coming behind me. He said, well, uh, I know Stephen won, but uh, we don't want him. We're going to put Bozo in uh, and let Bozo be the mayor. We, that, no, all of them want the same thing. Uh, we're in the same room. We just come in through different doors. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's why we have no problem being part of ecumenical group. That's why we have no problem being a part of uh, interdenominational groups. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't have a problem being in integrated uh, racially uh, and, 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 and uh, economic and political uh, uh, integrated groups that are real, authentic, and that are working for us as opposed to working against us. Yeah. That's why we can be a part of round tables that include uh, Jews, Muslims, mm -hmm. uh, Christians, Sikhs, and uh, others, because we, we have discovered through our collaboration that everybody really wants the same thing. Mm 